Hello, welcome to Jeannie's Art Adventures. Um, today I'm doing, this is an old pour over top of another one I didn't like. And as you can see, if I just lift that up, it's got, I don't know if you can see, little lumps on there where the old paint's gone. But we'll see. I thought I'd do a ring pour on it. The very first ring pour I did came out perfect. Ever since, failures. Um, the colours I'm using is this De La Rowney, um Thalo Turquoise. It has a gorgeous colour when it's mixed with white. Another one, oh, this is System 3, metallic blue. Um, and I've pre-mixed them up. There they are. I haven't added any silicon in, um, but they are mixed with Floetrol, and that tends to throw in some cells anyway. I'm just going to put in a bit of white, just to cover it. It's a quick one today. I'm trying not to get messy, because I came in here just to tinker with some of my... Oh, I'll show you what I've been doing. Little wooden cutouts that's got like little bits of glass on it and sprinkles. And I've done a couple of foxes. There's my little foxes and a dinosaur just because it appealed to me. This has also got the little glass bits on. So I came in here to do them and then I thought, oh, while I'm here, I'm sure you know that feeling. I'll just do. So I haven't put my dungarees on painting overalls so I'm trying very hard not to be too messy not to cover everywhere in paint I've come to I've reached the point where I've got so few clothes without paint stains on that I thought I'd better buy it looks like I've got silicon on that canvas oh well may work may not it may mean that it pushes the paint off um, but yeah, the fun thing about doing these is, um, I will show you my failures as well as my successes. So we'll see how it goes. I'm only going to add a tiny bit of black because I do find it really takes over if you're not really careful. So there we go, a bit more white. I forgot to actually look at what's this canvas. 12 by 12, something like that. How much paint do I need for that? Well, 10 by 12 is for 12 by 12, 5 ounces. These are 7 ounce cups, so should be fine. A bit more. It's really annoying that I always get fabulous cells in the cup. But I don't want cells today. Well, I don't mind. If it happens, it happens. A um, bit more blue. Oops, oh, looks like I've got a few lumps in there. That's what you get for mixing quickly. Sometimes the quick mixes come out really well, though. Make it up to about five ounces. I'm going to put a little dobbit of black in that there. Actually, I've got some little, I know what I'll do. Bear with me a moment. When I have paint left over, I put it in these little things. So I'm just going to maybe add one or two other little shots of colour in there. I've got some nice blues there. That's a different blue. Practically running out, that one. I thought I had a really nice dark blue here, but it might be this one. Mm, not really, but we'll see. Shall I throw in a bit of purple? What do you think? Just a bit, maybe. There. There we are. They've got, if you can see, these little funnels come with them. They've got like little metal nozzles there and little plastic caps. Which always my duff eyesight. It's quite hard to see to get them back on again. So, here we go. Right. I want to pour it where I put all that white over that side first. And we'll see what happens. Pour it from up high, do you think? Yes. Oh, 
Oh, I can see the sheen on the metallic blue. Yep, now we've got that phthalo green and white mixed together. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. Go tilting and tipping now. The temptation is always to, or well for me, to really tilt hard. Get that back in the middle. Oh, it's just so annoying because the first one I did was so easy. And ever since it's been just not the same. You see what I'm doing there. I keep forgetting to look and make sure it's on the camera. I haven't really got many lines on this one for some reason. Maybe it's the way I put the paint in. Maybe it'll even out as it dries. Let's see. Right, that's all the edges covered, I think. Push that back there. I'm not sure I like this bit in the middle here, though. I think I might just tilt that right off. There, stretch it right down. There. Right. Seems it's not come out how I wanted. Let's um, just find a bit of cloth and wipe my hands. Give it a quick torch, see if that makes it more interesting. My big torch has died, so I'm down to this tiny little one. See, look, even without any silicon in, you've got lots of tiny little cells coming out. I was using um, Liquitex yesterday because my eldest son bought me some for my birthday. And I love the glossy finish it gives the paint, but it really doesn't give cells at all unless you add the silicon in it, whereas the flow troll, if you don't torch, you can keep the cells off, but if you torch, you get these lovely little cells coming out. Another way of doing them is to flick some alcohol on afterwards, but you've got to be a bit careful with that, because the cells from alcohol, well, I don't think there is, um, they they break up very easily when you tilt and tip. I ought to have done this first and then maybe I could have stretched some of them. I've got some of them lovely big cells that other people seem to get but avoid me. Right. Whoops, come on torch, off you go. Didn't want to switch off then. Well, not the most interesting of paintings, is it? Where's my little box of goodies? Right, this is where these little bits come in handy because, watching the weather, because what I'm going to do is maybe just put a few more lines in for sort of definition. dark purple in since I don't appear to have a dark blue um, a black I think I've got a bit of black in here The black. Put that along these edges here. Oops. Not much black. I think it's running out. Yeah. 
run out. Oh well, that's fine. Put that down there to refill another time. Is there any white in here? A bit. Oh, I think I've got some silver in there. That might be good. Is there any white left? Not a lot. Oh well. Refill them another time. If I wasn't cloud watching, I'd refill them now, but I'm just trying to keep an eye on the rain because my scooter's outside and I don't want it to get soaking wet. Still not entirely convinced about this painting, but we'll see. Um, where's that silver? Yep, a little bit of silver. I'll just put a couple of bits of that across the middle here. A bit down here. Okay, I'm going to tilt it again now because I don't want those lines to just look like lines. And it might be a total disaster, but it might look nice. We'll see. Downwards. Try and do it there so you can see. Tilt it down and then maybe back again. That way. Sorry, can't see me doing it this way, can you? Kind of zigzag the lines a bit more now it looks a little more yeah I think that'll do I like this little bit down here um, I might just give it another little torch or I could get a straw and blow some of those lines which if I can find one I have one here that's typical oops there we are and what you can do to soften them is just Makes me lightheaded doing it too much though. Torching just where I've been blowing and the paints layer a little bit and then you can see some more tiny little cells coming but they just add that little bit of interest I think. The thing about painting, if you're not happy with it, you yeah. haven't lost by trying all these different things because at the end of the day you can just scrape it off, leave it as a background for something else. Um, and you're learning all the while how the paints react, how the colours go together, um, and you learn things that you could do next time. You can take a little bamboo stick too, or I'm going to use this piece of wire now if you want, and just pull little bits out, like little, little tails, wispy bits, and that can be quite fun. My problem is knowing when to stop tinkering with it like that. Sometimes you just do too much and you end up with something that did look nice and now you've just overdone it. Um, I'm going to leave that one how it is. Uh, I'll show you how it dries in a couple of days. Pop it on the blog and thanks for watching. Bye.